Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today we are reviewing the Kershaw Bare Knuckle. Now I know I'm a little late to the party on the Bare Knuckle. I know this is everybody's uh, awesome knife for the price, etc, etc, etc. And you're right, this thing is fantastic. So we have some 6061 aluminum scales here. 6061, for those of you that don't know, it's just a high magnesium, high silicon content aluminum grade that is very hard. It's not your typical, I'm going to keep bending it till it breaks. If that thing has a gauge of maybe 50 gauge, you're, you're screwed. You're never going to break it by hand without using a tool. Unless you're a strong, strong guy. The blade is 14C28N. As you guys know, that Sandvik blade is one of my favorite, favorite budget steels. It's kind of like a 9CR. I think I have a affinity for stuff that's not as popular in a lot of the models for some reason. And it just, it's, it sharpens very well. It holds its edge slightly less than, say, D2. Not slightly less. It holds it significantly less than, say, D2. But it is supposedly corrosion resistant with, I believe it has, let me see if I got any of my notes here. I believe it has a total of... 14% chromium. Don't quote me on that. I, I didn't have that in my notes as far as the chemistry content of 14C28N. But what I could tell from 14C28N, little side note, is that I don't know where the 28N actually comes from. I was looking at the chemical makeup. The only thing that I can come up with is that it has 14% chromium. Uh, the carbon content, I believe, is coming in at 0.11, even though they advertised it originally as 0.55, which turned out to be a lie, so they changed that. And then... The rest of the makeup, including the carbon content, came out to be 2.8%. It does have nitrogen in it. That's where the N comes from. But you're, I think that's where the 28N comes from. It's like, think of it as a 2.8N, which is basically 2.8 other than chromium content in this steel. That's the way it registers with me. I'm not sure if that's 100% true. But, you know, usually the names signify how much chemical content is in there. Anyways, that was a side note. So this is a sheep's foot style blade. It's uh, the the blade shape on this is so freaking practical. It's insane. Awesome, awesome practical blade shape. Awesome size, and I I am in love with this blade shape. The ergonomics of this guy, the, it, it's it's great. The only thing that would make it better, just because I'm so used to it, is a finger toil, which I may do if I ever upgrade this situation here. And I think I'm thinking about upgrading the situation eventually and keeping it as forever knife. This has something that they might call it a frame lock, but this is what they call a sub frame lock. If you guys can see here, I don't know if you guys can. Right there. You see that skeleton inside of the aluminum? And then it comes out to the frame. So what that is, is that's the actual frame lock itself. Now the reason they call this a sub frame lock is because this is not actually part of the frame. This is actually part of the liner, but it comes out to the frame. So they call it a sub-frame lock. Obviously, there's no skeletonization really in here. Uh, the other side is just straight aluminum. Uh, and once again, if you hear that clicking in the background, that's my tortoise going to town. I forgot to look up what this backspacer is. I'm assuming that's aluminum too. I don't know why they would do anything else. Backspacer is kind of cool looking though. This does have a reversible pocket clip that is deep carry. Awesome, awesome pocket clip. Tiny little pocket clip. You get a lot of usage out of that guy, though. And the cool thing is, is they have these like indentations or millings out in this aluminum that the pocket clip will recess into, which, you know, it under most cases, you're like, ah, on both sides. But this kind of looks like it's part of the design. So that's what makes it extra cool. And the whole pocket clip will just sit right here, right in that. That's pretty sweet, too. There is no lanyard hole on this, which you got to appreciate somebody just saying, screw it, right? Just screw it. I, I'm not going to put a lanyard hole. There's no reason to, you know, I would rather you not put a lanyard hole than try to emphasize some other things on there. Obviously, it's nice to have one for those of us that like the lanyard hole, but, you know, it's, for most of us, I don't think we use this, the lanyard hole at all. So, went on too long about the lanyard hole there. Let's talk about the action. So this detent is probably the strongest detent that I've ever experienced. Not to mention the position that you have to hold this knife like this in order to get that strong detent to go. 
Otherwise, if you guys saw my opening video or my unboxing of this, you're not, look at that. I'm pressing on there, and I'm not trying to press hard. I'm pressing light. I can't get it. And then I let go, and it comes out. So it's you got to get used to opening and closing this. But the cool thing about the strong detent, which don't get me wrong, that's more of a negative than it is a positive, just because of the positioning of the subframe lock. And, you know, if the subframe lock would have started maybe right here and went up, then you I don't think you'd have so much of an issue. But this is the cool part of it. Watch this. And just listen. I know it doesn't sound like much, and, and the camera might not pick it up right, but let's try it one more time. Let's see. It's so snappy when it goes in, it almost makes you be like, I kind of like the strong detent for that. It just snaps so good. And maybe it's the aluminum scales too that allow it to vibrate a little bit, but it's very cool. So we got a perfect placement of a thumb ramp here with some jimping. And the jimping is perfect. It's just typical narrow jimping that has wide spacers in between. So it's not going to cut up your hand, but it does feel dar darn. I was trying not to say damn, and I said darn, like it came out as dorm. Uh, damn good ergonomics when you're choked up, and or not when you're choked up, when you're, when you're just gripping down and bearing down right here. The ergonomics are great. Uh, I don't feel any hot spots really. You know, if your thumb rides up a little bit, that bump right there in the blade does kind of dig into your thumb but you know if you hold it like this and you're I, I don't feel any hot spots the only hot spot I might feel is in here and I don't even know what I'm feeling right it, it's it's nothing significant and whenever I do the ergonomics I squeeze hard as hell to try and feel if there's anything and I you definitely don't feel the pocket clip I'll tell you that the way this comes out and around in the back it feels pretty good there and the, it's just, I was going to say in the action, but I've already gone over the action. But it's it's a very, very, very solid knife to the point where it's kind of like some of those Civivis that I kind of want to upgrade and have one as a forever knife because I feel like you just have to. Let's check some of the hardware here. So the pivot seems to be a T8 and everything else looks to be a T6. I don't even check. Well, the cool thing about those T6s though is these two screws are only one-sided so you only have this screw and that screw at the tail end of it and then the two pocket clip screws pocket clip screws so let's get you guys some specs we'll go into some size comparisons we'll talk about some overall recapping of what i think about this knife and is it worth the price i'm gonna get out the price right now for those of us that don't know it because i hate when somebody talks about the price of a knife and doesn't tell you until like six minutes into the video which i am now currently where am I at? I don't even see my time. Don't see the time. It's not recording. So, I, I hate that. Absolutely hate it. This knife is $74 on most sites. On Smoky Mountain Knife Works, right now, it's like $54, guys. Go prick, prick. Go prick it up, you pick. Go pick it up, you prick. No, it's and you guys got to pick this thing up. There is a 20 CV model. That is coming in at $110 for the blackout version and $99 for the non-blacked out version. They're both black handles. The blackout version just has a black black blade. Oh, if you guys want to upgrade, you're never going to find 20 CV for under $100 or so at the $100 mark. Not that I know of. So check it out. All right, end of some specs. Done with that little rant. All right, so this knife is coming in at eight and a quarter inches. The blade length's coming in at just about three and a half, and the cutting edge is actually longer than the blade length just because of the way the handle is shaped. And it's coming in at about three and five eighths. So that's pretty sweet. First time I've ever seen that. Just I go off of this little notch right here is the blade length. But if you're going off of the cutting edge, which comes down as this handle, that's, that's how I got that. I obviously felt the need to explain myself because it was a little bit different. All righty. So the overall weight of this guy is coming in at 3.57 ounces. Still extremely lightweight for most. Uh, you always hear Metal Complex say his dream range is in between 4 and 6 ounces. My dream range just lies on whatever the knife is and however it feels, right? There's certain things that you want a heavier knife. There's certain things that you want a lighter knife. This is one of those that you may appreciate the lightweight aluminum scales here. Let's get into the overall blade stock thickness. 
Blade stock thickness is coming in at just about 125, 120 thousandths. 120 thousandths. And maybe we should measure it from the middle of this. Yeah, 120 thousandths. The behind the edge thickness is coming in at about 23. Let's check up here. See what they did with this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coming in about 25. Let's see back by the belly. Make sure I get it right. About 25 thousandths is the behind the edge thickness. That is a perfect working edge thickness in my opinion. You do not need that point near the 15 thousandths. There's no reason to have that, but it's nice. This is a knife that's like, just go use me. I will do everything that I can to take care of you and not break. I feel like the more narrow it is at the thing, the more chippy you're going to get. So, yeah, good verbiage. So, this is coming in at 0.45 inches thick just under that half an inch mark. And then let's check the overall height at its highest point. Would probably be right here. Now, if I were to check it right there, it's about 1.35 inches thick. So it is, it's, it's right in that range that I would say is comfortable. It's not, you know, PM2 at a 1.6, PM3 at 1.66, any of that stuff. And if you guys get tired of hearing me say that every time, let me know. I'll only say it every now and then. But I try to say it to remind people where they're at. So, first and foremost, here is your RET Model 1. And your RET Model 2. As you can see, longer than your RET Model 2, eh, slightly shorter than your RET Model 1. But not by much. I want to try something with the Red Model 1. I saw one of the guys on Instagram that I talked to. He had it upside down. And he goes like this. How the hell do you do that? Hey! You stab my... What the hell? What a dick. It just stabbed my freaking thing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I think it's cool. If you guys don't, then that's on you. It's all in the eye of the beholder. Your rat model, or your PM1, oh my goodness. Rewind. Your rat, deep breath. Here is your PM2 and your PM3. As you can see, the bare knuckle is a little, let's see here. It looks like it's slightly longer than even your PM2, which is interesting. Let's see. It's probably the same exact length as the PM2. Obviously longer than your PM3. Started struggling halfway through this damn thing. Alright. Alright. Don't know that then. So this is obviously coming in larger than your feldspar and your mini feldspar. And let's check your Savivi Brigand and your Savivi Odium. As you can see, I'm using the Brigand a lot over the Dogma. It's not because I like the Brigand better. I'm going to start interchanging them out, but the Brigand hasn't had that much face time. This is slightly larger than your Brigand, much larger than your Odium. So what are my overall thoughts? First and foremost, the 14C28N steel, amazing. The blade shape, amazing. The aluminum handles, or the aluminum scales, I usually don't like those. Just because I feel slippery, but this coating that they put it on, put it, the coating that they put on there is fantastic. The action, ah, it's a little tight. It's going to wear you out a little bit until you wear it in. And I still haven't worn mine in and it's been about a month now. So it's going to take some time. I'm sure eventually it'll get worn in. And I guess, you know, deferring to my notes, which I haven't looked at, I believe this is, I didn't even talk about what this is on. Yeah. Okay. So this is on some KVT ball bearings. Those are caved bearings. And I believe those bearings are on a steel plate so that they don't ride on the aluminum. Just as a double check, KVT ball bearings, subframe lock. I didn't write it down, but I could have sworn I read that somewhere. That, And I haven't taken this apart yet, obviously. But I think those bearings aren't riding directly on the aluminum. Because if that was the case, you would totally erode the crap out of the aluminum there. So, I was just looking over my notes again, and it looks like on, on Blade HQ, this is listed as a drop point. Does that look like a freaking drop point? It does not. So, all around, this is very nicely, nicely chamfered. Nicely chamfered. They might call this contouring. It's not really contouring. It just 
levels and steps up to the flat. But it still feels very comfortable in hand. The ergonomics are good. If I had to give the ergonomics a value, I'd give those an A-. minus. The aesthetics, I would definitely give an A because this thing looks sweet. The blade and the blade steel relative to the price, you're going to get an A-, minus too. Because at $74, you know, you may start breaching some of those upper levels like that are that are hitting lower on the price point for the steels but for $54 at Smoky Mountain Knife Works this is an absolute steal so I'm going to rate it on the $74 which is an A- minus for the blade steel relative to the value that being said at the $54 value this is an A+. plus. Plus this blade shape is absolutely fantastic. The fidget factor isn't the greatest just because of the heavy uh, detent and the fact that you got to really watch out for the sub frame lock, but that's all right. You know, you can get over certain things, and this thing is a freaking workhorse. It's something that I feel like you can toss across the room, and it's gonna it's gonna survive. You guys have heard my paintball talks before. I've talked about paintball in the truck and stuff. To me, the Kershaw bare knuckle is the equivalent of your Tipman 98 custom from way back in the day. I could take that gun and just rip it against a tree, and it would still work. That's how I feel about this guy. It's solid. And it's so functional, it's insane. So for $74, yes. For $54, go out and purchase this thing right now because I, I, I cannot recommend it enough. This is obviously made in the USA, and, and it's competing with the best of the best, and it does so very, very, very well. This is obviously a, a Natrix-style design from Kershaw, and I forgot the model of ZT that, that's on there. People hem me up for it, whatever. I'll freaking do that overlay thing where I put one right here right there right there yeah I don't see it but we're pretending right now maybe you guys can see it by the time I figured it out so the value 100% I mean if this appeals to you at all go get it because it is not going to disappoint in hand especially for the $54 price point for the $99 price point you can get 20 CV style of this and that's a knife that will last you forever it's even more corrosion resistant than 14C28N it's basically M390, right? My name is Tyler. This is the Kershaw Bare Knuckle. A very long overdue review, but I'm very, very happy to have done it. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a fantastic freaking day.